Uh, number 39. Uh, for this one, we're looking at the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus x over x squared plus 1 times x minus 1. Well, we can factor this thing above it by factoring x out. We get x times x minus 1. And as you can see, we have a removable discontinuity here. So we remove the x uh, minus 1, but we know that x um, cannot be 1. But because it's removable, we're going to have a hole in our seemingly continuous curve at that point. But it's going to be discontinuous at the 1. So the question then comes into play, what is the value of y at that point? Well, for this one right here, um, this is possible. This, there's no way that we can get a an asymptote out of that, because you can't get anything below one for that value. So um, you're gonna, if you take a look at the graph, it looks something like this, and Lord help me trying to draw this correctly. I, I think I'm in serious trouble. But what I found was when I did the calculator, I had a very sliver, very just a sliver of a line going across, didn't move up or down very much, so I couldn't really see what it was supposed to do. So instead of using, um, y is negative 10 for the minimum and positive 10 for the uh, maximum. I typed in negative 1 and positive 1, but I still left this as negative 10 over here and positive 10 over here. And then I, I took a look to see what that curve looked like. This was dramatic. This really helped get a good shape of the graph. And it looks something like this. And again, this is just me being artistically idiotic. It looks something like this. Oh, good grief. And then coming back down again and across there. Actually, this is much higher. It's more like around here and came down. Because this is right around one half. Why one half? Well, when we come back over here, we get, when this is done, we get x over x squared plus 1. And we're looking at, um, as x approaches 1, and this becomes 1 over 1 squared plus 1, which is 1 plus 1. So this is 1 half. So at this point, which is a whole, at the point 1 and 1 half. Okay? 41. Um, uh, um, 41 is pretty simple, as you see, you got 1 plus 1 over x, uh, only it says it's going uh, from 0 to the negative side, uh, from the negative side, so we'll take a quick look at that. Um, if you graph this, I'll put up here limit, as x approaches 0 on the negative side of 1 plus x, or 1 plus 1 over x, and we're trying to figure out what that limit is. Well, if we take a look at the graph, it looks like this. And it looks like this. And then we're taking a look at what, uh, from the negative side here. So we're going to start over here and follow this down as it gets asymptotic to zero. And that's, of course, going to the negative infinity side. So the answer for that is negative infinity. So that's problem number 41. Okay, now 43 is an interesting one. For this one, it's the limit of 2 over sine of x. And again, what was the calculator going to help you on this? Okay. You'd rather sit there trying to figure out all the patterns of signs. And I can show you another uh, diagram I had in which I did sine versus cosecant and cosine versus secant and all that. Um, you don't have to worry about that because the, the calculator will graph this for you. Um, so we're, we're approaching this as x uh, becomes 0. And we're coming from the positive side. So we're coming from this direction over here. So if we were to graph this, and again, I apologize sincerely. I flunked finger, no, finger, uh, finger, um, finger painting. I was I flunked talking about it too. 
anyway, uh, in kindergarten, so I, mean, I was scarred for life from for trying to do any more artwork, but here I am trying rather desperately. Uh, so for 43 here, uh, we had we had these curves that look like this. Yeah, this is bad. I apologize. But if you type this into your calculator, you see what I'm talking about. Okay? So, and we're going for the positive side. Now, here's the zero asymptote right here. We got two of these looks like parabolas that are approaching zero from two different directions. Since we're looking at zero from the positive side, that means this is the parabola that we're going to be focusing on. It goes all the way over here, and this is going to end up in positive infinity. So based upon this description right here, this is positive infinity. Not too bad. The calculator really makes life easy for us. I imagine it must have been a real struggle to do these types of assignments when you had no calculator. You had to graph everything. Good grief. The last one I'm going to do is another trigonometric function one, which again is made easier by the calculator. But here's one in which you need to know the relationship with the three major uh, trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, and the three minor uh, trigonometric functions, which is the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant. Okay? Um, and so uh, the, the problem here is that um, we have a y is equal to, and because cosecant is the inverse of sine, we, and we don't have a cosecant button on the calculator, so we simply hit for y1, square root of x, divided by, and then cosecant is the sine of x reciprocated. Okay? Now, here's where algebra helps you out a bit. I mean, you can leave it like that and the calculator will understand just fine. If you don't like how ugly that looks, if you know that you've got a denominator here that is being reciprocated, that becomes a numerator. So you could rewrite this as uh, square root of x times the sine of x. It's the same thing. And you can do your mathematical manipulations using that. I prefer to use the graph. Uh, so when we did this, basically what we're doing here is that we're allowing this to be uh, a function without using the denominator of becoming a zero. So, um, we, if we graph this, you get something that looks like this. And imagine this is actually going to be a hole here. But my graph gave me something like this. But I had to use the uh, zoom uh, 7 key to get this into uh, the trigonometric um, values that they normally use for this. Um, you could try to use the window, but it gets a little thin. Just when you see a, a function like with sine, cosine, tangent, or whatever, go ahead and, and uh, change the window by hitting zoom 7, which is zoom trigonometry. Anyway, the point of this is this. This right here is pi. So, um, and as you can see here, no matter which direction you're coming from, the value of y at that point is 0. So the limit equals zero. That's it. So you know, manipulation using calculator makes life so much easier for you. Be the master of your calculator. Know it well. This is going to really help you out later on. Your assignment, page 88, problems 34 to 46. Good luck.